So the first thing that we did is, you know, the, the at the very beginning, and let me just pull in some images so you can see it. When we started jamming on ideas, that brainstorming, so that kind of happened right here, okay? It was at the very beginning. Now, there was another move, um, which was the viewing and building on other people's ideas, okay? Which was a part of this, but a little bit, it, it didn't quite get us to that, that section in the middle where we're actually coming up with criteria. So the purpose of this right here, before we actually come up with our decision criteria, before we start making sense of this, is to draw out information. Okay, so we're not judging, we're not doing pros and cons, we're just making sure that we're on the same page here. Okay, Heather, you got a question? Okay. I hope you're ready for this. I, I'm pretty sure you will be. So you're really speaking from a facilitator's point of view. Can you pull that into what can we as tech hosts do to support that process if it's yeah. not our role? So I think it's, it's awareness of the process, right? What I'm, what I'm really wanted to share with you all is just a little bit of group dynamics. That's great. Because this model runs in the back of my head, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm tech hosting or doing something else. And so if, if I, as a tech host, you know, it's my job to make sure that the, uh, that the meeting runs on time, that we're, that we're getting, you know, less than the facilitator, but that the, you know, um, the materials that are prepare, prepared are put in, uh, in front of people at the right time. Okay. So you could do a little bit of backseat facilitation. And what I mean by that is, is that just sending a quiet note to say, hey, would you like to do a vote at this moment? Or do you want me to go ahead and share that, uh, that, that document? Because it, it may be with a little bit of knowledge of group dynamics, you, be able, you might be able to discern what's going on in the room better than the presenters, okay? If you've got a really good facilitator, they're gonna be doing this. But if you've got just a group that it's like, okay, we, we need to share a bunch of uh, presentations and then we're gonna have a panel discussion and nobody's really thought about the group dynamics, you're gonna be a head and shoulders um, ahead of where the group is going, right? And so having this model in the back of your head can give you a little bit of uh, really confidence to know where these turns actually happen. Now, let me give you some names for this stuff. All right. Now, there's there's a lot of different groups, depending on if you, if you actually study this, there's a lot of different groups. Sometimes this is called divergence and convergence. The ones that I tend to like is I like to think of this as opening, refining, and closing. Closing on ideas. So this is, you could think about this for uh, the way that decisions happen in meetings. There's opening to new ideas, there's put, coming up with refining questions, and there's closing on those ideas, okay? Um, by the way, this concept, calling it with that language, that comes from interaction associates, okay? Um, and just if you geek out on group dynamics, um, I'll just share that interaction associates they were started by um, Doyle and Strauss. And what Doyle and Strauss were known for was their book, How to Make Meetings Work. This is a book that came out like in the 70s. And it was the book that I think it really defined facilitation. And it's the first instance that I've found um, of the articulation of the role of the recorder. That's the first time that you really see it in print is from Doyle and Strauss. So these guys really know what they were doing. Um, but I also wanna share that you can take this model a little bit further. Okay. Um, this is something else just to keep in the back of your head when it comes to how people are showing up in the meeting. Okay. This is not just a model for the way that you make decisions. It's a model for human beings. You have openers. Then you have your refiners. These are people that ask really tough questions like, well, do we have the budget to be able to do this? Or are we tooled as an organization to be able to support this? Right. Um, and then you have closers. So closers are typically your people like, listen, I don't need to be a part of the sausage making. Just tell me what to do, right? So it's as you're seeing behavior, you can become almost like a like a like a an amateur anthropologist as you watch people use certain language in the room, and you can kind of label them as okay, this is an opening thing, this is a refining thing, this is a closing thing, and if the majority of the energy in the room is moving from opening to say refining. If they're starting to say things like, you know, if you're starting to hear more and more refining questions, it may be time for you to just kind of quietly suggest to the presenters that, hey, maybe this is time for us to move to this next move, right? Okay. 
there's an important function that I think especially tech hosts have that make this whole thing work, okay? So that is the container within which this whole thing operates. And we call that framing, okay? So framing is the stuff that happens around the edges. Framing is creating the safe space, the space of psychological safety, the social container that makes it okay for people to actually speak their minds um, and to share their best ideas and to refine each other's ideas and to say, well, here's that won't work and here's why, right? Irregardless of the power dynamics that may or may not be in the room, okay? So let me open it up to you all. So what have you seen out there that helps frame the space?